Well, hello everybody. It's Mike here from PhoenixCats.com and ToyMiniAussies.net. Uh, today I'm going to show you how I make my uh, homemade dog food. And there are some suggestions and everything, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to make nutritional food for your dogs. So you can get start weaning them away from the unhealthy dog foods that are sold at the pet stores or even at Walmart or your local grocery store. And you can find more information on our websites about that. But for today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with two pans, and I, uh, I use just our biggest deep dish uh, pans right here, and I fill them with water. Now, what I'm about to do is I'm going to fill it about, oh, about three-fourths of the way full and put my meat in first to cook it first before I put any of my vegetables or rice or anything. So stand by while I... Okay, so I've taken my two pans and I've filled this one up to about here in water and my deeper pan I filled it up to about here in water. Now uh, the reason I'm using two pans is because I have four adult dogs. Well, I have three adult dogs and one little dog who's one year old. But for the most part, this will make my, my crew uh, about two weeks worth of homemade dog food. So no more canned dog food. I'm making nutritional food for them at half the cost. Uh, some of the meats that I've used before has been um, chicken and turkey. As you can see, I use two pans. One, the reason I'm using two pans is because I have four dogs. And three of them are adult. One weighs close to about 100 pounds. The other two around 60 to 70 pounds. And then we have a toy mini Aussie that's about yay big. Weighs 14 pounds. So, uh, what this does is it allows us to cook two weeks worth of dog food. And in doing so, that I'm saving a lot of money by buying the natural ingredients, no preservatives or anything, and uh, making our own dog food. Now, the types of meat you can use are like venison, or you can use turkey, and chicken, fish, that kind of thing. Uh, primarily because I live in Arizona, I just use chicken and turkey, but I know of other people who are using venison because like in Oklahoma, there's a lot of deer that get killed on the roads, and uh, it's a good way to use that meat. So anyways, back to where I was coming from. Now, where I live, Walmart, uh, the super Walmarts in their meat section down in the stand-up freezers, have rolls like this of ground turkey for between like a buck fifty to a buck seventy a roll, and each one's a pound. I will put two pounds in each bowl here, or each pan. I'll put two pounds in each pan. Uh, but today I'm not going to use the turkey. Uh, I bought two chickens. And uh, every once in a while I give my dogs a chance to have uh, chicken instead of turkey. The ground turkey is just like, you know, ground up hamburger. Whereas the, t uh, the chickens, I actually cook them whole. And then when I'm done, I'll pull them out, let them cool off, and then I'll debone them, chop up the meat, and put it back into the dog food. A little bit of work, but my dogs love me for it because there's nothing like chicken. So what I've done, uh, once again, I should tell you, uh, where I live, you can buy whole chickens that are pretty meaty for about three and a half dollars a chicken there at Walmart. Uh, wherever, depending on where you live around the United States, it could be a little bit more or a little bit less, but still, uh, chicken's a good source of uh, protein for the dogs. So. I take, just take the whole chicken, and typically I like to put the breast side down. Um, that way as it cooks, uh, the real meaty part's down in the water instead of pointing up. Once again, I'm putting the chicken with the meat side down. And this will allow me to put it on roughly a medium-high heat. I get it boiling and then I'll come over and I'll turn it down a little bit so it's still kind of bubbling but not bubbling enough to splash all over the uh, stove. And I'll let it cook for between 
an hour and a half and two hours on that slow cook. It's enough to actually, where the meat's going to fall off the bones, but um, I don't like, I've already tried this before, so take my word for it. If you have the heat up too high, it'll end up splashing over, and then I had a mess, and it took me a half hour to clean my mess the first time, so I'm trying to give you some pointers here so you don't have to go through all the learning things that I have. So I'm going to turn my stove on about medium high and move my pans over. Okay, we're back now. It's been two and a half hours I've been boiling my chicken. I just wanted to show you that I use a spoon made of plastic and when I go into my chicken I can break apart and grab some of the chicken and it's falling off the bone. So then I check this one to make sure it's doing the same thing. And you can see that the chicken's just falling off the bone. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and get my vegetables prepared. And I'm going to take the chicken out and let it cool on my counter while I put the vegetables in. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, I have removed my chicken and it's sitting on two plates over here and it's just cooling off before I debone it and make sure I get rid of all the bones, pay in particular attention to the uh, backbone and any of the little fine bones that could really hurt a dog's throat. I make sure I pick through it and get everything out and throw it in the garbage. Uh, one other thing I wanted to point out is I do not um, uh, get rid of any of the water that I'm boiling the chickens in. That has a real good stock to it, and I just keep adding to it, so never dump the water out. Okay, so the next process is uh, I'm going to be putting in sweet potatoes and carrots into each one of these pans and let them boil for probably, I'd say, an hour to get them nice and softened up for the dog's chow. And what I have is I have about two pounds of carrots, and I put one pound of carrots per pan. And so uh, I'll get into my shredder and make sure I shred these down with my cheese shredder on uh, my food processor and get it nice and uh, small bits for the dogs. Uh, the other part about this is the sweet potatoes. Now typically what I do is, I never weigh these out, uh, but when I go to the store I buy uh, between six and eight sweet potatoes depending on the sizes and the season. And I just divide them in half and put uh, three to four sweet potatoes per pan. And that's what I'm about to do. I'm going to grind these up uh, using the shredder on my uh, food processor and I'll be adding it to each one of my pans. And I'll be back in just a moment.